Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banners go onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on Church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. Gates of hell can never against that church prevail. We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before marching on. Word. 
Super, thank you for that. Take your Bible and go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Thank you, Brother Mason, right there on the spot. John chapter 3, look at verse 30. John chapter 3 and verse 30. And I want to give you some principles tonight. We're going to talk about when Jesus increases in your life. When Jesus increases in your life life. Let's all stand for the reading of God's Word. We're in the book of John chapter 3. We're looking down in verse 30. John chapter 3 and verse 30. The Bible says, He must increase, but I must decrease. Now take your Bible, if you will. Go to the book of Matthew chapter 11, please. Look at verse 1. The book of Matthew chapter 11 and verse 1, if you will. Book of Matthew chapter 11 and verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus said, and think about this, and Jesus said unto them, here's, here's what's taking place, here's what he says. He says, Jesus is speaking here, and Jesus said this, basically, among them, listen to it now, there are not born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So among them, they're not born among women. Anyone, he's saying, that is like John the Baptist. There's no greater person that was born or that has been risen, if you would please, other than John the Baptist in his greatness. Now why is that? Why is it that God noted the greatness of John the Baptist? Let's pray and talk about it. Father, bless we pray. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the song. Bless now our time together, please, in Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, if you will. Again, in John chapter 3, in verse 30, it says that he must increase and I must decrease. Then Jesus speaking in John chapter 11 and verse 1, he says, Among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Now, why is it that perhaps John the Baptist, noteworthy, was greater than all that was around him. I think a lot of that is described in John the Baptist's attitude, where you see that he's looking at the Lord, and he says, in looking at the Lord, he's saying about himself that he must be the one that increases and that I must be the one that decreases. So how is it that Jesus can increase in our lives? You know, when Mrs. Wells and I were married, we took a verse and we claimed that verse together. It's over in Psalm 34 and in verse 3 where it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know, we wanted always to be able to exalt the name of the Lord together. And yet individually, we wanted to be able to magnify his name. And that's exactly what John the Baptist is doing. John the Baptist is saying, okay, I need to be the one that decreases while the Lord is the one that increases. But in order for him to increase, I have to do my part and decrease. So what is it tonight that we need to decrease so that he can increase? Well, first off, we know this, that when he increases, pride will decrease in our lives. Because it's not about us. It's not about what we do. It's not about how great we are. It's not about the song that I sang. It's not about the sermon that I preached. It's not about the leadership that I possess. No, it's about the Lord Jesus Christ and about all that God does in us and through us. John chapter 1 and verse 27, the Bible says this. The Bible says, uh, he it is, it says, who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes, now this is John speaking here, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. So here's what he's saying. He's saying the one that is coming after me, I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoes. Now, what's he saying here? He's simply saying that I need to be the one that decreases so that the Lord Jesus Christ may increase. Now, what is that talking about here? You see that there's not an element of pride in that statement whatsoever. He's going to be willing to bend over. He's going to be willing to unlatch the shoes of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to be willing to bow himself down to the dirt. He's going to be willing to get dirty. Uh, that's 
shows me that pride is going to be on the decreasing side. Uh, there, there's no, no pride, if you will, in unlatching somebody else's shoes. There's no pride, if you will, in bending over and picking up a piece of trash. There's no pride, if you will, in taking the second seat rather than the first or primary seat. There's no pride, if you will, of doing that which is the lesser over that which is the greater. You'll see that there's in that speech there, just in the presentation of his words, that which is a decrease. And by the way, are you listening to me? Uh, it would be far better for another man's lips to praise you than your own lips to praise you. Amen. It would be far better for somebody to come up and say, you did a good job, rather than you walk around saying, I did a good job. You know, hey, thank God for camp and thank God for the kids that went to camp and, and caught the chickens. Amen. Nothing proudful about chasing a chicken around that can outwit you. <laughs> hey, thank God for those that got on the horses and stayed on. Remember, first time I rode a horse, first time in my life I rode a horse. I was about eight or nine or so, and my grandpa put me up on the horse, and the horse took off. And I had no clue how to stop the horse. And here I am riding on the back of a horse over 180 uh, type of acres. And all I did was just hold on tight. Because I was scared as a seven or eight year old that that horse was going, no telling where it was going to go. I had no idea. I didn't know how to stop the horse. Now, sometimes understand that in, in following the Lord, as the Lord leads you in your life, sometimes you just have to get on and hold on. Sometimes you might not understand it all. You might not understand the direction of the Lord. You might not understand what God is doing in your life. You might not understand every step that you're supposed to take. And sometimes you have to trust God every single step of the way. And you have to rely on him. But you never rely on him if you have that element of pride in your life. The people that say tonight, I can make it. I can do it. I am the one that will carry it through is normally the people that will fall flat on their face. You have to be careful tonight to give God all the honor and all the glory. We first came here six years ago as pastor and family. Uh, uh, we uh, told the church, listen, when you get up and sing and somebody comes up and they pat you on the back and they say, great job, uh, say these words, praise the Lord. Because if it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't have a voice. If it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't have the ability. If it wasn't for the Lord, you and I would not even be here tonight breathing tonight. Thank God that God is God and thank God that God can work in you and through you and give God all the honor, all the glory, for great is his name. I'm saying tonight, pride will decrease when the Lord increases. Statement number two, personalities will decrease. Personalities will decrease. You know, we live in a, a very populated yet popular society. You know, and it seems like that men are drawn to men. And there's nothing wrong with that if the man is in the right place. But be careful that personalities do not take away the principle. Many people will bow and they will take and they will, uh, if you will please, compromise their stand because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings and they put that which is a personality over a principle. And can I tell you tonight, that is not right. You ought always to be guided by principle. Uh, even if sometimes you have to hurt somebody's feelings, it would be better not to compromise and lay down the Bible and walk away and let people trip over that which is not decent, not right, not godly, uh, not that is holy. Uh, can I tell you tonight that uh, personalities sometimes will get in the way and personalities need to decrease. That's what John the Baptist did. The Bible says over in Psalm uh, 8 and in verse 3, the Bible says, uh, When I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers and the moons and the stars which thou has ordained. Listen to what it says in verse 4. He says he's coming to a conclusion here. Listen to what it says in verse 4. It says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You think about the God of heaven. You think about the one that created all that is, was, and ever will be. You think about the one that if you was to walk outside and you were to breathe, it's because he created that. 
When you walk outside tonight, you see the moon and the stars later as it gets dark out. Uh, he's the one that created that. You think about the clouds that roll through the skies tonight. That's because of God. And then all of a sudden when you realize big God, little you, you begin to realize that uh, your personality is not, it, it's not as important as sometimes we think it is. Well, you know, you hear people all the time, they say, well, I got my feelings hurt. You know, when you hear that all the time, that's about me, 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 me. Well, I deserve. Now, dear friend, tonight, I'll be honest with you, being very candid tonight, if you got what you deserve and I got what I deserve tonight, we'd both be burning in hell. But because of the good grace of God tonight, we can thank God for everything that he has done. You woke up this morning, thank God for that. You're able to drive your car tonight, thank God for that. You're able to speak and give a testimony tonight, thank God for that. You're able to sing tonight, thank God for that. Never get so high and mighty and pumped up that you think that you're somebody that's more important than the creator God that created you to fulfill his will in and through your life. I'm saying that pride will decrease when he increases. Personalities uh, will uh, decrease when he increases. When I came to Texas, there was uh, something I had to go through to try and help some people. And uh, one Texas pastor uh, came to me and he said this. He said, well, this is just the way we do it in Texas. And I said, well, what about the Bible? Isn't the Bible practiced in Texas too? You know, it's not a matter of how I feel. It's not a matter of what I'm trying to promote. It's not a matter of, you know, uh, I just think that this is the way. No, what about going back to the Bible and letting the Bible guide you and letting the Bible help you? Understand that you and I, uh, in the eyes of God, are precious. And God wants to work with us. And God wants to help us. And God wants to guide us. But God cannot do that if you're wrapped up in yourself. You know, all of a sudden we start walking around relying on us more than we're, and I don't care who you are tonight, you need God. Amen. It doesn't matter what your background is tonight, it doesn't matter what your educational status is tonight, it does not matter what type of neighborhood you live in tonight, it does not matter who you're married to tonight, it does not matter how many kids that you've had that's turned out right or turned out wrong, it doesn't matter tonight where you come from or it doesn't matter tonight where you're going. I can tell you, dear friend, that you need God in your life and God can help you if you simply just decide you rely on God tonight. Let the per you, 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 don't don't get don't get the, don't, don't get this way where you, you you just think you're somebody. You think your underarm pit doesn't stink. Hey, don't ever get that way. I, I worry about sometimes when God begins to use different people, and all of a sudden they become lifted up in their own eyes. Can I tell you, I hope and pray that that never happens to me, nor you. Amen. Because if it wasn't for the good grace of God tonight, we'd be in trouble. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, we have all sorts of people come to our church. People that I don't like. They don't smell like me. They don't look like me. They don't act like me. They don't uh, behave themselves like me, when I guess that means that you're needed. I guess that means they need your help. Come on. You know, this ought to be a church where everybody's welcome. You say, well, their skin is a different color than mine, and their background is a different color than mine, and boy, you know, they're just different than I am. And people looking at you and looking at them says, thank God. Now, I'm saying tonight that uh, we have to decide that we're going to be a people where by pride will decrease in our life if we want him to increase, increase, increase. Look, stop getting your feelings hurt. Stop walking around like a little whoop pup. Uh, stop having to be pampered. Hey, get out of the nursery tonight. Let God help you. Well, I wanted to be friends with so-and-so, but they don't want to be friends with me. What do you mean, all? Oh. 
Well, I wanted to sit beside so-and-so, but they didn't want to sit. Well, look, look, get over it. Get over it. Get over it. Well, I wish that so-and-so, I, I wish that they would just give me a little bit of attention. Get over it. Well, you know, they, they didn't pat me on the back. They didn't tell me how good I was. Son, you got a pride problem. Well, you know, and by the way, listen to me. Listen to me. It's he that does the work through you. You know, people quit ministries because they think they can do it. Then when all of a sudden it doesn't happen, they'll want to quit a ministry. You know why? They are the problem. Whatever happened to the time when we prayed down God's blessings? Whatever happened to the time when we said, God, my Sunday school class is not growing. God, I need you. My bus route is not growing. God, I need you. God, I can't do this, but you can do this. And so, God, I yield myself the best of my ability. I give myself to you. Whatever happened to Christians that were yielded? Oh, come on. We slide into church. We hear some preaching. We slide out of church. And the same way we slid into church is the same way we slide out of church. Nothing different. You know, why don't we decide that we're going to hit an altar one night and just stay there until God changes me? Used to be the old time preachers used to say, I didn't come to church to get out. I came to church to get in. Most of the people are too excited about getting out. I got to go down to Dairy Queen. It'll be there no matter what time you get out. Well, you know, I got to go over to the Brahms and fellowship. I think sometimes we're so concerned about me. We're eat up with me. Get me out of the way. Get the person out. I believe this. I believe in most cases that, uh, that blood is more important than Bible. I can't believe that you scolded my little one. Now, I'm not being mean tonight. I'm just being straightforward. But if you'd scold your little one like you should, then others wouldn't have to. You say, well, I just, I tell you what, they're running up and down the hallway and I just can't control them. That's your fault. By the way, if you have discipline in the home and it spill over in the church. Get away from that timeout stuff. Get back to the old way and use a paddle. Apply the board of education to the seat of understanding whereby they might gain some wisdom. You put them in a corner and you say, you go over there and you stand in that corner because you did that. Here's what they're going to do. They're going to be in that corner and they're going to be standing in the corner and they're going to be saying, oh, I tell you, how can I get away with this better next time? And they're planning their strategy. By the time they got done, they're ready now to rob Fort Knox. <laughs> Don't do that. Man. You know, uh, uh, my kids... Uh, when, uh, when they were bad, uh, Mrs. Wells would say, and, and when they were bad, they were my kids. She'd say, your kids. But now, wait a minute, watch this. Did you know that when they were bad, uh, we, we would send them to the room? We learned years ago, we, we didn't paddle them in the living room because we didn't want them to uh, think bad of the living room. Always walking around sad in the living room. We didn't do it in the kitchen. Because we like to enjoy our food. But we sent them to, now our bedroom has always been private chambers for Mrs. Wells and I. But, uh, and so our children have never been allowed to come in our room without first asking permission. It's a sacred room. But because it was a room that was not frequently visited by them, that's where we would send them. To meet Mr. Woody. We'd send them to the room. Uh, Mr. Woody's been in our family an awful long time. Jonathan is 29. Mr. Woody's about 29 and a half. See, we prepared before they ever came into this world. We sat down as parents and we said, if they do this, they get this spanking. 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 You said, it sounds like judgment around the Wells house. Well, we also had reward. 
If they did this for a durational amount of time, they get this reward. If they do this for a durational amount of time, they get this reward. If they do this for a durational amount of time, they get this reward. So it wasn't just a sad place, it was a happy place. But when they, they had to earn the rewards, they had to do what was right for a durational amount of time. And they were able to reward them. Now, wait a minute. I'm saying this. I'm saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him? If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we begin to put ourselves above God. Now, by the way, what do you do when you disagree with God? God says, do this. And then you get your feelings involved. And you say, well, I just feel like God is leading me different than the Bible. That's not God leading you, friend. That's your flesh leading you. That's your mind leading you. Has nothing to do with God. Well, I feel this and I feel that. Show me that in the book. See, we, we live in a feeling crazy society where everything has to be politically correct. Well, can I tell you, God is not concerned in politically correct. God is concerned in what he says in the book and he expects his people to rise up and to uh, embrace the book and to obey the book and that is the God of heaven and we're supposed to keep our feelings out of the way. All right, so pride will decrease when he increases. Personalities will decrease when he increases. You ready? Possessiveness will decrease when he increases possessiveness. Now there's nothing wrong with having things. Listen to me, dear friend, but don't let things have you. Amen. Nothing wrong with having things, but don't let things have you. See, the Bible says in uh, 1 John chapter 2 and in verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, the Bible says, it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. You know, possessions are temporary. We lived in Brooklyn, New York for years, and there was a man, uh, had a son, and uh, they were very wealthy, astute people, and his son died, and he loved his Cadillac. So they buried him in his Cadillac. Now, by the way, that has to be a big place to dig. Buried him in the Cadillac. But can I tell you, he wasn't able to take his Cadillac to heaven or hell. See, what we have will leave behind to someone. What we have. The things. But just make sure that those things do not possess you. I know young people that live for things. They live to get a car. They live to get this type of suit. They live for this pair of shoes. They live for this. Don't live for that. Live for Jesus Christ. And understand, if you live for Jesus Christ, then he wants you to have the... And by the way, there's nothing wrong with having things. What makes it wrong is when those things have you. Do those things stop you from serving Jesus Christ? Do they stop you? Is a thing in the way for you not being completely surrendered? A thing. A thing. When the kids went to youth camp last week, they had to put away their cell phones, their iPads, their laptops, and whatever else they had. And so those things did not control them. But for once, God was going to be able to have a clear shot at them. You don't know how many young people that I have dealt with here and in other churches that get hooked on porno because they've got a phone that parents do not have common sense enough to password. Now you, you parents, you know, your kid reaches the age of 10 or, or, or 11 and a half, or 12, or, or beyond, and you get them a phone, and you just let them have that thing just free. They'll, they'll find an app, a way to get in, yes, sir. and before you know it, they'll wind up ruined. You know why God was able to have a clear channel into the hearts of our young people this week? Because the things did not have control of them. 
Oh, preacher, you're preaching like we should live in the dark ages. No, I'm preaching like you need to live in an age where God has free reign. And I'm saying that get the hooks out of the devil and uh, be able to put those hooks in the presence of God and let God hook you. Well, I'm saying tonight, personalities will decrease. That which is possessiveness will decrease. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, some, uh, uh, it, it's not the gun that makes the murderer. It's the murderer that uses the gun. You hear all these uh, people that just don't have any sense saying gun control, gun control, gun control. Not, nothing about gun control. It's a matter of uh, the person that uses it. How do they use it? See, you can use a cell phone for good or bad. Come on, say amen. amen. You can use a TV screen for good or bad. You can use an iPad for good or bad. When you start using it for bad, can I tell you, it's going to hurt you. Oh, but preacher, I'm a good Christian. Well, if you're such a good Christian, why have you already fallen? Well, preacher, I've got control. No, you don't. It has control. That's how come every time you go home, you've got to go to it. By the way, I'm talking to parents too. Come on. I came up in a generation, there was no games that you could play that would be on an on a, on a iPad or something like that. But I see adults all the time. I don't see them sitting in the hallway reading their Bibles at Parkside Baptist Church. I see them sitting in the hallways playing a game. So you're, you're frying us tonight. Sometimes we need frying. Look, I'm saying tonight, hey, let's decide. Let God be the one that's on the increase. Is he increasing in your life? Are you spending more time with God? You spending less time with God? Are you walking with God? Are you reading the Bible? Are you praying? Are you going soul winning? Are you faithful to church? Are you just playing around? I'm saying tonight, pride will decrease. Personalities will decrease possessiveness will decrease. You ready? Pollution will decrease. Pollution will decrease. I'm talking about things that pollute your mind. That pollute you as an individual. Boy, I came in a, up in a day when the preachers would preach and they'd be hot. You, you know why nowadays it's become a teaching thing rather than a preaching thing? Read your Bible and you'll find that in the latter days, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Didn't say preachers. It said teachers having itching ears. You know why? Because teaching is slower. Teaching has a tendency to elevate man and his knowledge. Preaching has a tendency to let the Holy Ghost work more than the teaching. Now, every pastor, according to the scriptures, ought to be apt to teach. We have teaching on Wednesday night. But we're not going to change our Sunday morning and Sunday night. You know, there has to be the balance, but it doesn't need to be all one way. And there's churches across America that all they ever do is teach. Well, no wonder nobody's rising up out of the pew. No wonder they have low uh, sowing crowds. No wonder they have people that's not motivated to see uh, God uh, do some great things uh, uh, in their life. Why? Uh, simply because it's all, it's all down here. It's all down here. It doesn't need to be all down here. Come on. Now, now don't get me wrong. I believe God calls a man. But listen to me. I've seen very few young people that have surrendered to go to the mission field under teachers. I've seen very few young people surrender to go out and start independent Baptist churches under teachers. And what's going to change America, my dear friend, I believe is the pulpits. 
You get a fired up young man to get out there and preach the word of God from the pulpit the way it needs to be preached. Hey, all of a sudden the young man says, I like to do that. God, if you would allow me to do that. And by the way, doesn't the Bible say that when a man desires the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing? Well, sure. Pollution will decrease. Look at this verse and I'm done. Told you it'd be short. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5, the Bible says, and I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here he is, and he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Why did he say that? For I have seen the Lord of hosts. See, when we stand next to man, stand up if you will. We stand next to man. Depending on who we're standing by, we either look better or worse. And by the way, we compare ourselves, don't we? Well, sure we do. We compare ourselves. Well, I like his haircut better than his. Well, I like his tie better than his. Well, I like his suit better than his. Well, I like his stance better than his. Well, I like the way he holds his Bible better than him. We compare ourselves. But God says some comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. See, you can compare yourself to another brother or to another sister, and depending on how they are on that given day at that given second, You will either look better or worse. That's why you're not supposed to compare yourself. Come on. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to yield yourself to God and let God have free reign in your life. Free reign. That means it should be your will inside of God's will. God is whatever you want. It's not what I want. It's whatever you want. God, if you want me to be a doctor, I'll do it. God, you want me to be a lawyer, I'll do it. God, you want me to be an entrepreneur, I'll do it. But God also, want me to be a missionary on the backside of the desert, I'll do it. God, you want me to be a pastor, pastoring 50 people the rest of my life, I yield. I will do it. God, if you want me uh, to be somebody that works in this assistant pastor someplace and uh, uh, just serve a man of God and to help him and to uh, encourage him and to uh, help him to perform the calling in his life, God, I'll do it. It's a matter of putting your will in his will. See, when it's all about me and it's my will, come on. And by the way, it's easy, thank you, Doc. It's easy to serve God when everything is rosy. But what are you going to do when it's not rosy? Stay with me and I'm done. It's easier to obey your parents when your old parents gives you a command that lines up with your priorities. What are you going to do when your parents give you a command that goes against your priorities? What are you going to do then? People all the time say, I don't like the rules at home. I'm leaving. Where are you going? Join the army. (laughs) Doesn't make any sense. By the way, if you cannot come under your parents' authority, you're going to have trouble coming under somebody else's authority. You will. The Bible says to obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Then the Bible says that when you honor them, Then comes the blessing. What's the blessing? He'll add days to your life. That's with honor. That's with honor. Here's what you ought to do as a young person before you make a decision. Uh, Stand up, Dad. Before you make a decision as a young person, here's what you ought to do. You ought to say, I wonder what my dad would think about that. I wonder if that would honor my dad. I wonder if that would please my dad. Come on. Amen. Thank you. Be seated.
got your arm around your wife. Kind of love her, don't you? Alex, leaning against your dad. Brother Shane, around your wife there. Yeah, Brother Castillo, around there. You look tired. That's probably for support. <laughs> Brother Cavanaugh, around his wife right there. Now all the men are going like this. <laughs> Give me your hand now. Let me help you a little bit. Who you are on the inside flows to the outside. Come on. Come on. You ever see a young couple freshly married holding hands? They got that look about them, you know. I mean, they really do. They really do. It's, it's really neat. I get to marry a lot of young couples here, and they get that look about them. They hold hands. It's like. Walking down the hallway. (laughs) Oftentimes, I see young married couples do this. He's holding one hand, she's holding both of her hands. You see it? You do, you do. It's like we can't walk down the hallway without each other. (laughs) You see it? You ready? You ready? You know, I mean, you you see him go to the car holding hands, he opens the car door. She gets her body part in. He shuts the car door, goes to the other side. Then after you're married for about two years, she opens her own car door, gets in. We were traveling evangelism. My daughter's favorite illustration, favorite illustration. She'd always say, Daddy, are you going to tell jump, baby, jump? I said, do you want me to? She said, I'd like to hear it. I said, but I told it in last church. She said, I like it. So many times I give the jump, baby jump. Get married, can't afford anything. Maybe you're a college student. Go to the thrift store. You buy the $2, $3 jacket. It's rough. Come to a mud puddle. All of a sudden, you look at your bride. You look at the mud puddle. Bride, mud puddle, bride, mud puddle. Take your jacket off. Throw it over the mud puddle. Come here, dear. Walks across the jacket, ruining the whole thing. Oh, but honey, you... Oh, you're worth it. I love you. I'm I'm just so honored you'd be my bride. I love you so much. I'd do anything for you. Married two years. God's blessed them because they tithe. Because they tithe. Because they tithe. Now they got wealth. He's able to go out and buy $250 suit, $500 suit, $1,500 suit. God's blessed them. Come across a mud puddle. He looks at his bride. He looks at the mud puddle. Looks at the bride. Looks at the mud puddle. Looks at the bride looks at the mud puddle and says, jump, baby, jump. (laughs) We laugh, but that's the way we are in church. Remember when you used to show up early? Come on. Remember when you used to dress up for church? Come on. You remember you couldn't wait till the preacher got up? You didn't know what he was going to say, but it's going to be good. Remember that attitude? Remember that? Now, by the way, preaching hadn't changed. Bible hadn't changed. Wonder who has. You. You can't blame it on anybody. You've got to look in the mirror. I'm closing. Dale Moody one day said, every time I get up in the morning, I see public enemy number one in my life. When I look in the mirror, it's me. It's me. 
the old spiritual. It's not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, yes, it's me, oh, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, yes, it's me, oh, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. Most of the problems we have is me. I must decrease so that he can increase. Let that happen in your life. Father, we thank you for tonight.